Okay, in this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about lip sync um, and animate and mouse shapes here. So for the mouse shape side of things, remember that under our class website, I have the Electron Mouse Shapes where I talk about the mouse shapes that you want to use for different consonants and things like that. And so for this tutorial, it'll be kind of, I've already drawn those out and put them onto my page here. So to prepare for things, all on one layer right here. You'll draw out all your different mouse shapes. And just so you don't have to sit through it and watch it, I went ahead and uh, selected each drawing that I made. I right clicked on it, and then I converted each to a symbol right here and put it into my library. So if you click on your library, and I put it all under here, I made each of my different mouse shapes and converted them into a symbol right here. So. Um, in order to kind of follow along with this tutorial, to kind of take a take a, however long you need and kind of go ahead and catch up to that point where all of your, your drawings are on the same layer right here and each mouse shape is a different symbol right here. So after that's done, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into symbols here. And the reason we're going to do that is it's going to make it easier to make the mouth line up from one shape to the next. And Animate has this feature where it automatically attempts to take the audio that you're using and process it and create lip sync for you. And you can just kind of go in and make adjustments to it. And in the end, it saves a, a ton of time here. So um, before we do anything here, let's go ahead and import our audio. So I have some audio already prepared and it's in a WAV file. So I'm just going to click on this and or click the plus button and make an audio a, a blank layer that I named audio and I'm going to go to file import to stage so file import import to stage and I have the WAV file right there and I'll press open and so you can see my WAV file and I'll just play this this is some Tina Belcher style voice acting right that so this is just my voice talking right there and that WAV file is pretty small so just Small tip, if you want that to be larger, the waveform, you can just right click on the audio layer, go to properties, and then at the very bottom under layer height, you can make it 200 or even 300%, so you can kind of see that waveform a little bit better. So that might come, ha come in handy later on. So that's in, so let's get it so that we can do some automatic lip sync here. So remember, I have all my mouse shapes on one layer right here, and they're all on their individualized symbols. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first keyframe right here of my lip sync layer. So all of them are selected. And then I'm going to hover my cursor, and I'm under the selection tool. I'm using that. I'm going to hover my cursor over one of these mouse shapes. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to right click and go down to convert to symbol. So I'm basically selecting all these symbols, and I'm converting all of them into one symbol right here. So this one is going to come up. It's going to be graphic. That's fine. And I'm going to call this lip sync and I'll do all caps and press OK. And so now under my library, you can see there's this new symbol where all my mouse are the symbol right there. And so here's something new that I haven't talked about with symbols yet is they can kind of work like pre comps if you're familiar with After Effects, where if I double click on this, so you can see this blue bounding box is going around all the mouse shapes right there. If I double click on it, we're gonna go into the symbol right here, um, just like a pre-comp in After Effects. And if I wanna go back to my main timeline, I just press this button right here to go back into the main timeline. So to go in, I just double click right there. And additionally, you can also get into that symbol or that pre-comp by double clicking in your library window as well. So it's pretty easy to go back and forth between the two. So I'm going to double click to get into this. And so we're going to start setting up the automatic lip sync. So we can see we're on frame one right here and all the mouths are in place. This mouth is in, is in the correct position. And basically one by one, I'm going to take each mouth and create a new keyframe one by one and put each mouth into position right there. Um, and so that'll be the next thing that I show. The first thing I'm going to do first, though, is my character has kind of a gap in her teeth. And so I'm just going to take those mouse shapes and do those first, and then I'll line these other ones up later. That'll just make it a little bit easier for me to kind of line things up correctly. So we have shape one right here. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next frame, so frame two, and I'm going to create a new keyframe. Not a, a blank keyframe, but a, a new keyframe right here. So right there. And what I'm going to do, oops, I zoomed in and I meant to use the select button, is I'm going to use the selection tool, and I'm just going to take one mouth at a time and move it on top. So that's an identical shape. So I'm going to delete that. So let's do the shape. And so I'm going to use the gap in the teeth to help line up the shape a little bit here. And on that new keyframe, I'm going to delete the one that's behind it. So I'm going to select the one that's behind it, delete. And I'm just going to keep repeating this process over and over again. So I'm going to go to the, the next frame now, create a new keyframe, select a new mouth to put in. And you can see this mouth showed up behind it. So if that happens to you, um, you can press Shift, Command, and Up, and that'll that's a shortcut to kind of bring it to the front. You can also go to Modify, Arrange, Bring to Front. So Shift, Command, and the Up cursor on your keyboard. And so now, hopefully, that'll be in front now. And so I'll just go back, delete the old one, and keep doing this over and over again. So Shift, Command, Up to bring that to the front. And I'm going to try to delete the one in the back if I can. Might have to zoom in a little bit here. Oops, and so I clicked out of it by mistake. And so if that happens, you just double click and get back into the, the into the symbol. But overall, that's pretty good. And so now what I'm going to do is just go frame by frame and delete all the mouths that are kind of on the outside or on the peripheral, but keeping the mouth that's on the inside, right? So this one's fine and just deleting the mouth, the, the extra mouths on each frame right here. You can also drag and select an area to delete to make it go a little bit faster. Be sure not to delete the, the mouth that's in the correct position though. Okay, and so now when I press, I'll press loop and drag that out. So this is the looping area. Okay, and so each each drawing gets its own frame right there. Okay, so now let's set up the automatic lip sync right here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the back button to go back to my main timeline right here. And um, what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna click on my lip sync layer right here. Go to object. So properties, object over to the right and down to lip sync right here. So again, you click on your lip sync layer to make sure it's selected. Then go to properties, object and look for lip syncing right here. Click on that and you're gonna get this window right here. And so you can see the first mouse shape that I drew is showing up for each of these different mouse shapes and so what we're going to do is we're going to select a new mouse shape for each one so for neutral i'll click on it and you can see all the different frames that i created between the 17 frames is right there so find neutral that looks like a good eye uh, but i'm just going to kind of go through Okay, so one thing you can see right here is um, I made one mistake when I was kind of going through that kind of process before where I, I, I kind of, you can kind of see when I click on this, I have some duplicates of some things and um, I didn't put my, my R sound in there. So um, that is fixable right here. So I, I'm just going to kind of proceed for the moment because just assuming that everyone, you know, did better than me and did it right. Um, 
but I can also go back and fix that. So I'll show you how to fix that here in a moment as well. So you can see right here, um, under here, this will give you options. If you have multiple audio layers, you can choose which one you wanna use. So we're gonna use the audio layer. And I'm just gonna press done, it's gonna process. And you can see right here, it automatically generated lip sync right here. And I can already tell it, it didn't get it perfect because there's like no audio happening right here and she's making the F um, uh, expression right there. But this gives us a good starting point right here. So I'll just take the play back loop right here and I'll play this back. This is some Tina Belcher style voice acting. What is your favorite salad dressing test? This is some Tina Belcher style voice acting. What is your favorite salad dressing test? This right, so that did pretty decent actually, right from the get go. And so what we can do here is we can continue to make adjustments to this as well. So for instance, I can go into here and so there's the F sound at the beginning, right? But, or the F face right there, but there's no sound happening. That should be a neutral face right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that layer, or sorry, on that frame, go to properties, object, and then instead of going down to lip syncing, which is the button that we had pressed earlier, I'm gonna to go to frame picker. It's kind of part of that same panel. So I go to frame picker, and then I just choose the neutral face right there, and let's just move that. You can see it automatically changed it to the E right there. So let me move this frame picker up towards Make it a little bit of a smaller window and I'll put it up here a little bit more out of the way so we can just see this a little bit better. Okay, so this woo right here should be an A sound right here. So let's do it again. So I'm gonna click on that. So again, it's under properties, object, frame picker, which will bring you to this window right here. So um, I think that should be the the S sound, and you can kind of choose between different ones, which one kind of seems, seems like it looks the best. This is some Tina Belcher style voice acting. And you can change it that way. You can also change the timing of things just by, let's say we want this E, let's just say hypothetically I wanted, I mean, that's, that's actually the right spacing right there, but let's just say hypothetically I wanted this E to come a little bit earlier. I just click on it right there, drag backwards, and it lasts for longer right there, right? So you might take some frames and move it a little bit earlier. This is some Tina Belcher style. Right, and you you pretty much have it. Okay, so let's say that you have this and you're like, darn, I kind of, you know, maybe you did what I did and um, didn't put the, the R in there by mistake or something like that. So we can continue to add new mouse shapes into this. And so, and it's actually not even that hard. So. I'm gonna go into the library button, double click just to kind of get into our lip sync symbol right here. So I just double click and we're back into, you know, our, our symbol or our pre-comp that we made where I was kind of going through um, shape by shape right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to go to a new frame, insert a new keyframe Go to symbols and find the, the mouse shape that I forgot to put in there. Let's see here, was it? There it is, WR mouth. Drag it onto the canvas right there. And so now I have it. And I dragged it on top of the O, so, and you know, maybe I need to reposition that so that it goes up a little bit, but you can continue to fine tune these even if the position's not exactly where you want it. So now I have the option of, what I would probably recommend doing if you kind of like the way your lip syncing works, let's say this M is kind of where I wanted an R to be, is so I can just go click on it, same thing, object, down here, frame picker, and then there's my R sound right there. So I can just put it in and it comes up. And additionally, if you if at any point you want to kind of update these and try to get it to do the automatic lip, lip sync again to kind of recalibrate, <laughs> Um, all you need to do is just um, click on this. So click on your lip sync layer, go to object, click on lip syncing. And let's just say for the R, I wanted to kind of switch it to that shape right there and make sure audio is plugged in. And when I press done, it's gonna recalibrate and try again. So you can see it kind of made a few shifts right there. And 
that is how you do lip syncing.